that's the exact one I have in my kitchen and it is getting replaced today. <laughs> are you kidding me? The girls are gonna freak out. Thank you, Zach. I'm glad you like it. It's so awesome. I love this. How did this all start? How did you decide to sort of start creating content? So I, I guess I've always like kind of liked art and, and I really picked it up in high school. And I had like a small following on Instagram because I because I would post like some of my drawings and stuff like that. Some of the people really liked my artwork so they were like, oh, oh can you make like some YouTube videos so we can see you draw real time? Mm -hmm. So that's when I like started creating a couple videos here and there. I was I was so nervous on camera. I think I was like filming in my room and, and I had to retake it probably like 20 times. I think that's really interesting for your viewers to hear that, that at first it wasn't totally comfortable. It took you a few tries to like, you know, tell me about that process. I, I think I was just thinking about like, making my video and I'm like, okay, I, I, I kind of have to do it sooner or later. And and I was always a really shy kid. So for me, I, I just really wanted to do something uh, like out of my comfort zone without too many people watching. So, Ironic, 22 yeah. million followers. Yeah, I probably had later. like a couple people that were gonna watch, maybe like 50 or something. So I was like, okay, I'll, I'll do this for like the, the 50 people. So what would you say to someone who might want to create a bit of content but is too afraid. I think when I first created content, I, I didn't know it was going to be so big for me. I was just like, okay, like, like if I mess up worst case scenario, like, like there's only going to be like two, three people watching. And they're probably going to be with my, my family. It changes your disposition if you think people are watching. So to block that out not only makes you more brave, it's actually healthier for the ego because I think it's good not to assume people are gonna see it. Were you nervous when you first started acting? I was in diapers, so I probably didn't know no. <laughs> what being embarrassed was. So now that you know 22 million people are watching, has that changed the way that you work? I guess I've gotten like a little bit more comfortable. I, I'm still naturally like fairly shy and reserved, but I have been able to kind of like step out of my comfort zone a little bit. And when I was first creating content, it was more like I did like a voiceover talking like just about the art. After the art progressed, people wanted to like find out a little bit more about me. That's a good tip is let the work lead and kind of put yourself behind it and grow an interest in what you're accomplishing rather than just making it about you. Yeah. I think that's a really worthy piece of advice. Yeah, and I guess when I first started out, I, I also thought like, why would the, the viewer care about me if I have like, if it's just me? But I kind of want them to be like interested in my work so at least they have something that they like find is really cool. Just because I thought I wasn't like very interesting as a person and I guess as people looked at my artwork a little bit more and found out a little bit more about me, they, they wanted like a little bit more and a little bit more and, and that's when I started like opening up a little bit more. Did that feel like a compliment or a responsibility? I thought that was a bit of a compliment just because like w when I was younger, like nobody really wanted to find out anything about me. So so I thought it was so cool that, that there are so many people who, that are like, oh, I want to know like more about your life, like what what you do. Was that sort of what your childhood felt like? Like you were more of a wallflower? Y yeah, I think I, I I was always very isolated and like antisocial. So I found it so cool that that so many people were interested in me. Why do you think that was? Well, at least like in my classes and stuff, everyone's like more outgoing, loud, and stuff like that. And and in like a group dynamic, I, I just don't really know how to fit in. I have to say, I really love hearing that because I just. And I'm assuming, and assuming is dangerous, but mm -hmm. there are probably so many of your followers that think that you might not have that, you know, Achilles heel of shyness or not feeling like you're fitting in. And that just gets down to the emotionality of, I think there's probably a lot of people that can relate to it. And yet, do they know that when you watch you? Yeah, I think a lot of people assume since I have like a big following that, that I'm like really out there or like, outgoing and stuff like that but, but I have kind of like I'm like pretty reserved and, and I have like a small friend group that I like to stick to. So what is a night at Zach's like place like? What are you doing when the cameras are turned off? Probably like try to learn something new. I do like some business stuff. I, I like to work out. I, I really enjoy like meditating and like going on walks and just like cl clearing my head. Okay that is good advice for people who are just 
binging social media? What is advice of like when to know the limit has been reached for the day, it's time to turn off? For me personally, mm -hmm. after consuming some content, I'm just like, okay, like, like, is this helping me achieve my goals or, or am I just kind of like wasting time at this point? Was it anything in your family? What gave you the knowledge to know that you needed that balance of on time and off time meditating, walking? So they would always limit me to like one hour of internet a week when I was younger. And, and I would kind of like sneak behind my parents' back and, and play more than I probably should have. But then, but then I was able to fail from that because then all of a sudden I, I thought about it and I was like, oh, I'm not really going anywhere. And, and I kind of had to learn it myself, not, not from like what my parents told me. What is some advice like a, a meditation amount of time or propelling yourself to go out for a walk. What works really well for me since I'm like a vi very uh, visual thinker, I, I just like put on headphones, like like put on a, a song I really like. I would blast it uh, probably a little too loud. It's, it's, it's bad for my ears. Okay, so you blast music and you're a visual thinker and you go out there. Do you find that on these walks and in these meditations, creative things come to you or you're able to sort of cleanse your palate and get rid of all the noise and then start anew. I think it's where I come up with new ideas, but even more so, I'm like thinking about the future. Just because when, when I'm working, it's like pretty, pretty stuck in the present. So to get like the motivation and drive to just like grind every day, I, I kind of like tune everything out. And I think about like what my work's gonna do for, for me and for other people like 10 years from now. And I'm just like visualizing what that world's like, what I'm gonna be doing. And after I, visualize those goals. I'm like really excited about it. And then like ideas start coming in. Sounds quite organized if you ask me. What or who do you think is sort of a catalyst for you to be such a giver? Uh, so you give back so much. Like where did the influence come from? It mostly came from when I was younger, but, but I didn't have much to give. So, so there wasn't really anything for that. And I, I think it was not until I started talking to my friend, Mr. Beast, Jimmy. Like I saw his content and I really liked how he was able to create content and give back to people at the same time. And then I think the, um, the click for me was, was when I painted a lot of iPhones and I surprised strangers and they were like so happy about it. And I was like, whoa, whoa this is like really cool. I can give back, do, do my art and, and create content at the same time. I feel like that's around the time where my daughters turned me on to you and I started becoming obsessed with your work and I wanted an iPhone so badly <laughs> that you would do. But I really think it's the kind of person that you are. I mean, just real talk for me, I just think if a person has a lot of influence over other people. My deepest wish is that they're leading all of us to think outside of ourselves. When you're taking a walk and you're thinking about the future, what next would you like to do? What was your latest meditative walk future thought? Well, obviously I really love YouTube. I really love art. I want to keep doing those things, but, but I want to like expand further into like everything. So, so in the future, I'd be able to like run like startups, things like that. And then after earning a lot throughout my life, I would like to um, start up some like really cool organizations. I always, I always had this fun idea about like a free college because I think college is so expensive and, and education is pretty important, even though I dropped out. Uh, I did too, but I agree. And then my girls, my daughters are in a very traditional formal school. And I think sometimes when you didn't see it through, it kind of always bothers you and you appreciate education even more and, and want to see it go the distance for people. Yeah, but I think that, um, that that's something I definitely want to do, like run these organizations and like nonprofits to like help people out. But obviously I need like money to do that. So, so I want to like use my platform to like build, build up a huge empire where I can like use it to like help others. Okay. So big goals. I believe in my heart you're going to meet them. Well, thank you for everything that you are and you put out there in the world. It's been such a pleasure to like hang out with you today and not stalk you on DM. It's nice to meet you IRL. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for inviting <laughs> me. Thank you so much.